Welcome into Let's Be Honest. I'm your host, Kristen Cavallari, and I am back with fan favorite, Dr. Sherry <laughs> Campbell. Hi. Hi. It's so good to see you again. It's so good to see you too. That last <sighs> show was incredible. The reach out to me and to you was it was it was incredible. So special. It was special. And that's yeah. why I knew I had to have you back. I mean, you touched so many people's lives, which I knew was going to happen. And, you know, it's interesting because after the response, I was like, OK, we've got to have her back on. But so many people specifically requested to have a podcast about co-parenting with a narcissist. And so I just thought, who better to have that with than you? So right. I'm really excited to dive into that because it is, quite honestly, probably one of the hardest things someone will ever have to deal with in their life. Ever. 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 It, it touches every emotional wound that you've got. It, it, it touches the wounding of the person that you married and why you married that person. And now you're like, great. Now my kids are going to go through what I'm trying to avoid for myself yeah. alone. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, when you when you divorce a narcissist, you're like, you know, thank God. But now when you have children with one, the last thing you want to do is talk to this person every day. But if your children are still really little, you're probably going to have to. You are going to have to. Um, the hardest thing that I think is that you've got to keep it unemotional. OK, yeah. And make I had to learn in my just my divorce to make it about the business of my daughter. Okay. Logistics, right. pickups, drop offs. Um, but a narcissist does not like that. And they don't really even respect the stipulation that's given from the courts. Yeah. And the family court system is not equipped to deal with severely character disordered parents without putting your kids through hell and psychological testing and all the things. And your kids don't know what's bad or not bad right. at that time. So they can see you reacting over something that you should validly be upset about. Right. But then they think you're the one who's upset with their other parent and they don't understand. And it's hard for everybody because you're not friends with this narcissist. Oh, no, no. So they're just keep it flat. Keep it to business. OK, so so what is your advice for someone dealing with this? So it is facts only. Yes. Completely remove all emotion. Yeah. What else? Because they will try to push all of your buttons. I mean, we all know that all they want from you is a reaction. So you can't give it to them. Right. Right. And then I also think, and this is kind of unfortunate, but it's true. I think you have to document everything. When you are dealing with this type of behavior, I even think something as small as, hey, can you take the kids on the 21st instead of the 22nd? Sure. Screenshot it, put it in a folder. That stuff that simple because they will oh, say yeah. one thing and do another. Oh, yeah. But then obviously bigger stuff with harassment, threatening, all of that, put it in a folder so it's really easy to access when you need to. If you don't document every single thing, then you really have no power. It's sad that you have to do that. But the only thing that scares any type of narcissism is if you're going to expose them. Right. So documenting is a form of exposure, but that's valid. Like in, yeah. in my divorce, my ex would be path, passive aggressive and just show up tremendously late to the point that my babysitters were not able to be on time for their jobs. Yeah. And, and is that control? Oh, completely. Like that specifically. It's to yes. have that control. And to get me furious at pick up or drop yep. off in front of my child. Right. Right. Again, to push your buttons to make it seem like you're the crazy one in front of the kids. And my daughter certainly had times of seeing me be so frustrated. I'm a very on-time person. Yeah. I value my time. I value the time of others. He'd be 45 minutes late. Wow. And then I'm dealing with the complaints from the babysitter because they don't feel safe to talk to him. No. I documented this for four years. And in California, as we all know what traffic is like, I got a stipulation that if he was 15 minutes late to drop her off, I could leave. Oh. And if he was 15, late, 15 minutes late to pick her up, he didn't take her. Oh, wow. So you were able to get that. How with long did it take you to be able to get three that? Three years. Yeah, it takes, a, it takes a while. Three years. Yeah. But... He didn't think I would actually go through with it. And I did. Yeah. And you know what he did? Created a huge scene so that I would look like the bad person yeah. in front of my kids. In the divorce, they do, they're do. they more committed to you in hate yeah, oh yeah. than they were ever committed to you in love. And that is exactly it. So I have a question. So 
depending on who leaves who in the marriage, whether mm-hmm. you leave the narcissist or the narcissist leaves you, does that is that a factor in how they then treat you afterwards? Or are narcissists all sort of the same and they just want to make your life a living hell? They want to make your life a living hell. But if you've wounded their ego by leaving them, by leaving them and you've left because they don't typically leave. Right. And why is that? They love having control over somebody, but having other things on the side. Okay. But they don't want to lose what they've got because they feel a sense of power over what they've already established. Okay. And they're naive enough to believe that they're entitled to it. Right. And you've stayed. Right. You've stayed for such a long amount of time that they actually don't believe that you'll ever go. So now they get the best of both worlds. Yeah. Right. So when you leave them, it does two things. It exposes their dysfunction. Mm -hmm. Um, They're worried that they'll be exposed to the kids and then they retaliate. And now their mission in life is to make your life as difficult as possible with what you treasure most and what you value the most is your children. And so they do. They create these smear campaigns against you. And sometimes it is with the kids. Sometimes it's with the kids and the community, your old friends. It's anyone who will listen. So... I've always wondered, and I think the kids are a separate thing, and I want to talk about that specifically, but just in a general sense, do they create these smear campaigns because you know the real them, and so there's this vulnerability and this fear that you'll expose them so they want to trash you before you're able to? Or what is that really about? I call it jumping in front of the truth. Okay, yeah. Okay, so it's it's like a blockade. Yeah. The problem is, is that their smear campaign is based in drama, and they can feign emotion really well but they're angry. Yeah. They're angry. And then they they get as many people involved and they tell straight up lies about you. Completely. Complete lies. And they want to gather a team so that you will just bend. Really what they want is they don't want you to divorce. Yeah. They want to derail your ability and your bravery to divorce them. They're so offended that you ever found the reasoning in your mind to leave. Right. They ignored all the signs that you were on your way out because it's unbelievable to them. They're Even a, though there were 500 <laughs> conversations, they never oh, thought. Yeah. yeah. Because they be, they believe they're above reproach. Mm-hmm. So they just don't really believe that you're going to do it. It's so true. And it's so fascinating to me, no matter how many conversations I've had about it, how Truly, all of the behaviors are the same for all of them. They are the same. They are. Male or female. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. It does not matter. I mean, I've watched a female narcissist uh, in my office that was so insane. I mean, I didn't treat her for long because they don't stay in therapy. No, because they don't see it. But she manipulated the court system. She manipulated attorneys. I've never seen anything like it in my life. And she got everything she wanted. She did because they're con artists. They do have this way of fooling everybody. They get away with everything. And now your deal is unhook. Yeah. Let them. Okay. Because it's not about winning. It's not about winning, but they are so masterful at getting you to want to win. Right. Because it's your kids. Right. Right. And you want to protect your kids. And there's so much that goes on with alienation and they won't put it in the DSM-5 quite yet. It's more of a syndrome than a disorder. Mm -hmm. But I know that kids hands down know who the bad parent is and who the good parent is. I agree. Sadly, kids will align with the parent that they're the most afraid of. Oh, wow. Almost always because, hands yeah. down. And they don't side with the parent who's fighting for their lives to keep the kids safe. Because going against the parent who they're afraid of is scary. Scary. And, yeah. They're afraid of being totally abandoned. Yeah. And I'll tell you that covertly, they will talk to our children in a way that if you love your other parent, then that means you don't love me. Exactly. It's, all, it's it like they make you pick. Them. Yeah. And then they feel afraid that this parent's going to leave them or abandon them. And so they will fight for the parent who's mm-hmm. hurting them Yeah, over the parent who's the good parent. And that can derail years of a relationship for some parents. That's what's so sad about it. You guys, one thing that I just absolutely love is a turkey sandwich. It's simple, but I love a good sandwich. And I, in the past, haven't eaten that many just because, you know, I'm kind of watching the carbs, don't want to eat a lot of bread. But now I don't have to worry about that. 
Hero Bread makes those same delicious favorites free of consequences or compromises. They've remade carby, empty calorie bread products into fluffy, delicious versions that include no net carbs, zero gram sugar, and fewer calories, plus protein and fiber. What is not to love? You guys, literally this morning, I was making sandwiches for my kids. I actually cut them out into heart shapes. And they asked me how I got the bread to be so fluffy and delicious. And I was like, I had to tell them I didn't make it. I was like, I didn't make it. I actually bought this, but they're obsessed. Another fun thing that I did was I rolled out the bread. And because it's so fluffy and great, it's really easy to roll out. Spread it a little peanut butter, a little jelly, and then you can like roll it up into a roll. And my kids also loved that. Really hard to believe that this bread is actually good for you and has protein and fiber in it. We also are obsessed with our tortillas. We've been doing breakfast burritos pretty much every morning and some chicken quesadillas. Those have been my go-to lunches for the kids since I've gotten this bread. So everyone's very happy. Okay, so you guys definitely check out Hero Bread. Don't give up on being a breadhead. Hero Bread is offering 10% off your order. Go to hero.co and use code HONEST at checkout. That's HONEST at H-E-R-O dot C-O. All right. I'm excited to talk to you guys about this new brand that I discovered, Bond Charge. Bond Charge is a holistic wellness brand with a huge range of evidence-based products to optimize your life in every way. Founded on science and inspired by nature, all Bond Charge products adopt ancestral ways of living in our modern day world. Their extensive range of premium wellness products help you sleep better, perform better, have more energy, recover faster, balance hormones, reduce inflammation. The list is endless. From blue light glasses and infrared saunas to red light therapy to EMF management and circadian friendly lighting, Bond Charge products help you naturally address the issues of our modern day way of life effortlessly and with maximum impact. My personal favorite product from Bond Charge is their red light face mask. Benefits of the red light face mask are they help with wrinkles and fine lines, sore jaw, eczema, migraines, acne, scar tissue, wound healing. It's relaxing. It helps with razor burn and even ingrown facial hair. Red light therapy has been reviewed in over 4,000 peer reviewed studies with 400 plus being double blind placebo trials. Not only do these studies have amazing health benefits, not one has shown any negative side effects. I love the red light face mask because it's so easy to use. It's just 10 to 20 minutes each day. And you can do it while you're watching TV, cooking a meal, putting the kids to bed, honestly, anything. It has both near infrared and red light. So it boosts collagen and elastin production, which we love. It's super lightweight on the face and it doesn't get hot. I've tried other brands and honestly, this one's my favorite just for how easy it is. And another thing that I love, if you guys really do listen to the podcast, then you know, how I feel about EMFs and they have zero EMF radiation. So love them for that. Since using the red light face mask from Bond Charge, I've seen a noticeable difference in fine lines and wrinkles. They also have other amazing products such as low blue light bulbs, blue light glasses, EMF protection products, infrared sauna blankets, and 100% blackout sleep masks all backed by science. Go to bondcharge.com and use coupon code HONEST to save 15%. That's B-O-N-C-H-A-R-G-E.com and use coupon code HONEST to save 15%. So because it is really common for the narcissist to just lie to the kids about the other parent. So what can you do in that situation? Tell the truth. Just tell the truth. So what happened in my dynamic is my daughter would come and say, daddy said this and daddy said this about you to these people. And I was like, so how did that make you feel? Mm. I stood up for you, mommy. Mm. And I'm like, that's so good. I appreciate that. And I said, well, let's straighten that out because we both know that that's not true. Um, But also when she would say, daddy's like this, I wouldn't say, he's your dad. He's doing his best. He loves you. That's what happened to me growing up. Okay. Oh, but it's your mom. Right. You know, she didn't mean that or right. whatever. So no one validated to me that what I was dealing with was insane. So what with my daughter, I'll say, you are right. You're okay, right. right. Your dad is that way. Yeah. No, I'm not starting those conversations with my daughter. Right. And I think that's the big difference. That's the difference. If they're coming to you about it, mm-hmm. then you can be honest. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's very different than you just out of nowhere saying, oh, you know, your dad's kind of crazy or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. I think that's... That's alienation. He, right. This is why they can't prove anything. Right. Okay. Because 
who's, who said what first. Right. But when your kids get told something that's scary or hurtful about you, they will tell you. Oh, yeah. And the more that they're told, don't don't tell your mom this or your dad this, they're even more compelled to tell you. Yep. So you do have to keep their secrets. You don't want to confront your ex on yeah. what was said. Well, because I've found there's no point. There's right? no point. Because you will go around mm-hmm. and around. Nothing mm-hmm. will be solved. And, and then your kids get you. punished. Ex- exactly. And so my parents, and my dad was a narcissist. We said it on the last episode. Mm-hmm. And my dad would lie to me about my mom. But the thing that my mom never did was she never defended herself. And that caused years of me being angry at her. Oh, and so yeah. I, I agree with you. I think if your kids come to you, you have to defend yourself. And I don't agree with bashing your ex, but I do think you have to be very, you have to tell the truth about well, what's going on. And also defending yourself is mutually exclusive to another person and whoever your ex is. Right, right, exactly. Do you know what I'm yes. saying? It's like, you don't want to enable your ex by not defending your truth. And if you want your kids to know their truth and to learn to be in contact with what the truth is, you have to tell the truth. Yeah, exactly. If you give everyone the benefit of the doubt, let's say, and you think this is going to help your kids because you don't want to create a bad relationship with your kids through dishonesty. Right. If your kid's gut is saying, I didn't like this when mommy or daddy said this, and that's, they do this all the time and you go, oh, it's okay. Yeah. You know, it's not okay. Yeah. And their body is telling them. So you want them to learn what their body's saying. And you need to say, that's wrong. Okay, right. To and I'm really sorry that happened to you. How can I help you? Yep. Right? How can I help you language something to your dad or mom that says that this makes you uncomfortable? Mm-hmm. And you can give them skills like that. Okay. Right? And they will do it. Yeah. Oh, They're not yeah. going to be successful. <laughs> and I warn, I would warn your kids of that, you know? Yeah. Your parent, your other parent has a hard time listening and believing, but I still think it's important that you share what you feel because you're important. Uh, Okay, that's really good advice. Mm -hmm. Really good advice. Yeah, because you want to validate your kids and you don't want them to grow up questioning their reality. Well, and you don't want them to grow up trusting just anybody. Yeah. You know, I I did not have any guidance growing up. Mm -hmm. You know, I have nine marriages between two parents. Yeah. Okay, so I had one step family after another and blending and they all had kids and, you know, it was really, really hard. And so I became very people pleasing Mm -hmm. because that seemed the only best way through because the truth that didn't work. Mm -mm. And I I, I became out of touch where I was never allowed to be connected to what was being felt in my body. Mm -hmm. And so I have raised my daughter through a divorce to stay connected to her body and what her body feels for her, feels to her. They will even derail if, you know, some people set up, you have to have a FaceTime with the other parent. I really would try not to do that. Um, Those parents want to be very invasive to your time and they'll find every way to not allow your FaceTime (sighs) time on their time. Mm -hmm. Isn't it the truth? Oh, Oh, sorry. It just didn't work out. Missed your call. Missed your call. Oops. And it's like scheduled in the stipulation, (laughs) Uh right? So (laughs) that puts the kids in this weird obligatory space, you know, where now they have to not hurt whose ever parent they're not with while they're with the other parent. Right. It's like, that's their time with him. This is their time with you. If you get really invasive, it's only hard on the kids. That's what these narcissists don't understand. The only people you're hurting are the kids. They don't care about the kids, though. At all. And they didn't have kids to care about kids. Yeah, yeah. The kids in a divorce are a tool. They are. If they can't control you in marriage, they're going to control you through your kids in a divorce. I think that's the most heartbreaking And call it love. Right. Exactly. (laughs) Call it parenting. Exactly. That's the part that just absolutely breaks my heart. It is heartbreaking. So 
this harassment that people mm-hmm. will experience, is there light at the end of the tunnel? When will it end? Is it when the kids are older and they no longer have that control? Is it when they have a new victim, someone else that they can, you know, quote unquote, pick on? Like, when does it ever end? <laughs> okay. It doesn't end. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Not the answer yeah. I was looking for. <laughs> it decreases. Okay, okay. 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 So the light at the end of the tunnel is you can't unsperm and egg this problem. Yeah, right. <laughs> so it doesn't end, but it greatly decreases. So once they're out of high school and they're mobile and they can drive, yeah, and they have a mind of their own, and there's no more stipulation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This sets these children free. Okay. Um. And the the only then way that they're in your life, because fiscally stuff ends then too. Right. Correct. Right. So then, right. The younger they are, the more control they have because oh, there's yes. just so many more moving parts with kids. Well, and kids are easier to manipulate. Yeah, absolutely. They haven't gone through identity development. Right. right? They're, they're not there yet. So mm-hmm. when it ends fiscally and custodial time wise, mm-hmm. it ends. Then it's big events like certain sports events or uh, a graduation or, right. you know, like a, a, a marriage. Yeah. But at that point, <laughs> they're not really interested in you. But what won't stop is the back talk about you behind their backs for the rest of your life. Because they really are so angry that you had the nerve, yeah. the audacity yeah. to leave, that they are obsessed now with your new life and they don't like that you have it. I've even seen that with my own parents. I mean, my parents oh, got yeah. divorced when I was in third Me grade. Too. And yeah. my dad yeah. still will rip my mom apart. And it's like, mm-hmm. what are you? Why? What is the point? Narcissists never get over a wound to the ego. They do not. When you're wounded and you're healthy, you want to get over it. Right. You want to get through it. You want to get to a place where you've had transformation. You've had some level of like resolve, mm-hmm. right? And you feel more whole. Yeah. Narcissists have no interest. You are enemy number one if you bruise their ego. Yep. Forever. Because they literally can't believe you'd have the audacity Mm -hmm. to leave them. Yeah. It's so true. I know. God. Do you find, and I I could be totally off base and you can totally tell me if I am, but do you find that drugs and alcohol go hand in hand with narcissists? Is there Very often, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, They're angry people. Yeah. Okay. And, and it's, kind of like a chronic comfort seeking. Yeah. I also see <clears throat> addiction though in survivors of toxic family. Oh, okay. Right. But I would say that, you know, when your ego's big and you get attracted to addiction, uh, you're a bigger version of who you are a little bit intoxicated. Mm-hmm. But do I think that they love reality? No. I think they can be addicted to money. I think they can be addicted to right. gambling. They can be sex. addicted to power, sex, yeah. drugs, weed, alcohol, okay, right. whatever it is. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. So what if your co-parent that you're dealing with is, you know, doing drugs and alcohol around the kids? What can someone do in that situation? Document. Yeah, right. Just document. go back to document. See, the problem is, is that the family, family court's the most uncivil. It's it's very sad that criminal court is more civil I agree. than divorce court. I agree. Okay. Parents are meaner to each other than prison inmates. It's so true. And they will create frivolous <clears throat> lawsuits. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. They will all of a sudden have a stipulation agreed to want to change it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. just to keep you in court. Mm-hmm. So the court system is not going to help if your child is actually in danger. Yeah. Or whatever they're modeling over there. Right. right. So all you can do is document. Your kids are like little reporters. Yeah. They don't know that they yeah. are. But you you don't document in front of them. You right. don't do whatever. If they directly ask you for help, then I I tried to talk with my ex like she doesn't want to come. Oh, wow. She feels completely neglected in your care. Um, How was that received? Oh, just I'm, not. Yeah. I'm, I'm an idiot, yeah. you know. And so I couldn't help her, but mm. she saw me try. Okay, right, right. She asked me. I tried. Yep. And at that point, I would just say, we have to do this until we're 14. Yeah. So what does that conversation look like? If your kid doesn't want to go to your ex's house, how do you empower them? Because I do think you have to empower kids rather than... Because obviously, 
if that situation is so horrible at your ex's house and you're wor- worried about it, you don't want to put that on your kids. Mm-hmm. So how do you empower them rather than letting them know that you're worried about them over there? You have to wait for their approach on the conversation. And that is the hardest part because they'll come home and my daughter literally needed 24 hours of what I would call detox time. Yes. She wasn't her normal self coming back. Mm-hmm. And then I was so excited to see her that I would want her time. But I, I learned like, okay, she's been poisoned, so she's got to go download that. And then I always gave her that space. And I, I that would be a, an advice I'd give to parents yeah. is, I know you're so excited when you get your kids back and you're worried. So you want to know, like, are you okay? You have to really refrain from asking, you know, directly give them 24 hours, let them detox, and they usually start talking. Mm -hmm. If you really want your kids to talk, also don't go face to face. Oh, okay. It's very intimidating. Yeah. Throw a ball. Right. An activity. Take a walk, go on a bike. Um, They tend to open up a little more when it's not eye to eye. Okay. They're little. Yeah. No, that's That's really, really good like advice. we're going to go have adult conversation, yeah. right? So yeah. listen, <clears throat> mm-hmm. don't let things go over your head. Sometimes they might throw out a hint that you're not ready for and it goes by you. Mm-hmm. Um, when they ask for help, help them in front of them. Okay. Yeah. I used to write texts because speaking with my ex was like, jumping into some sort of a WWE verbal arsenal that I was like never going to win. Like I'm really intelligent, but I'm not going to out-argue a narcissist. Let me just humble myself. (laughs) My PhD means nothing. (laughs) Not when you're dealing with a narcissist like that. But I also think also having everything in writing is also good. So I would let her help me craft the text. Okay. To kind of keep her mind, yeah. like what I wanted to represent her experience. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to project my experience onto hers and color her experience because I, like I don't want to get in trouble. Yeah, no, <laughs> okay? exactly. Yeah. Family law is not a nice place. Yeah. So I'm going to be clean. <laughs> but I would allow her to help craft the email. I like that. Okay. And we never got the response back that we wanted. Uh, But I do feel like she learned to find her voice in this way and she was speaking her truth. Okay, I like that a lot. Finding Mm -hmm. your voice and being able to speak your truth. Mm -hmm. I think that is a really great takeaway. They will not speak it to them in their custody. They're scared. Which I I understand that. Well, you know, I mean, I was like that with my dad. I could never speak up to my dad ever. No. I think in my whole life, I'm 37, I only have a handful of times. And it was when I was an adult. So they do. They instill this fear in you that you feel like you can't, you can't speak up. And you know what the fear is? The sickness of that fear is that you're parenting your parent. Oh my God. You are a child minding the mood and self-worth of your insecure, narcissistic parent. Right. That's exactly it. What a responsibility for a tiny human to do that. Right. It's insane. It really is. so unfair to the kids. I was so placed in that position growing up, both sides. Yeah. It was my job to make my parents feel like good parents through multiple divorces. Right. Oh. No, no, it's okay. Oh my gosh. Not affecting me. Yeah, no, I'm fine. <laughs> God. Literally. Right. Oh. So obviously dealing with a narcissistic co-parent will test you in every way imaginable. Mm-hmm. So it is really important to take care of yourself mentally. What are some ways that people can get out that frustration in a healthy way? Because I do think it is so important to get it out instead of just holding all of that in. Move your body. Okay, yeah. And for women, we really need to talk. We release stress through sharing and through talking. Get a therapist. Get a divorce coach. They actually oh. have those oh, now. I didn't know that. Divorce so liaisons. That? So they just kind of like, mm-hmm. they're, it's almost like therapy in a way, but specifically for divorce. Divorcing a narcissist. Oh, I see. Oh, wow. Yeah, there's actually people now that will step in and help coach you wow. on what to tell your attorney. Now you have to think wow. about this. Now there's money that way. Right. There's retainers for attorneys. <sighs> Every phone calls a billion dollars. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So this is where... It's hard, but if you're scared and you're powerless and you're feeling like you're just really Which is getting a lot, people, I mean, it's very easy to feel oh, like that absolutely. in this situation. It is because they are fantastic at manipulating the court system. Yes. And they go in with the intention to do so. Yeah, yeah. We're going in to solve a problem. Right. right. 
as right. innocent as that is. Yeah, I yeah. wouldn't even know how to manipulate the court I system. Know. So they have a skill set. They're good litigators. Yeah. So when they're dealing with attorneys and judges, I was litigated out of every conversation. I would be so head spun after any conversation with my ex. I know. Like pulling my hair out. I know. <laughs> like, I know. What? Like shaking and just like bouncing after, yeah. you know? So yeah. our kids aren't equipped for that. Mm-hmm. And I think that they're going to tell you, they're not going to tell your ex, um, but you have to take care of yourself. Mm-hmm. There's nothing you to, can do to change that. I always looked at it like I need to turn the noise down. Okay, yeah. And I would often not answer any messages that would come my way. Okay. I started to feel like this is now my time yeah. to recover from you yeah. because when the kids come back, you're now busy trying to recover your kids from whatever experience they just went through. Mm-hmm. And you can see a change in their posture, oh, their yeah. mood, their quiet. They're inside their bodies. Mm -hmm. They don't want to talk, especially boys. Boys aren't talkers. You know, they really need to move their bodies. So when it was my time, because that's another thing, they don't really want you to be single. No. (laughs) They don't really want you to have time for your relationship. Yeah. (laughs) So they just decided, I'm going to text you 20,000 times. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, right. So what (laughs) happens when you do get into a new relationship? What is their behavior then? They're just going to constantly badger you. Constantly. And especially on your time. Right. Right. Okay. Like you have date night. Yeah. They're blowing you up about 500 things. Blowing you up. And it's an emergency. Everything is an emergency. It's an emergency. (laughs) Like it's 911. Literally. Right. So now your new person is sitting there and your new person is just quiet and watching you. Yeah milk the ex and you know that's a hard thing to confront yeah it is because you don't want to be like don't talk to the other parent of your child I know. but at the same time it's date night i know can we have some boundaries it's our <sighs> weekend can we have some boundaries i know why now now your your person is parenting their ex right exactly like, you manage your parenting on your time mm-hmm. Maybe she or he could manage their parenting on their time. Imagine. I know. What a crazy concept. (laughs) But there's an emergency. No, always an emergency or like showing up at the house unexpectedly. You're like, excuse me, (laughs) what? My current boyfriend, his ex is a special one. And she um, is so invasive and she'll be like, I was in a tragic, this is the wording, a tragic accident and I'm trembling. Oh God. And it was like a fender bender. Like, fender bender. Literally, yeah. I cracked yeah. open my whole skull. <laughs> I could see brain matter. <laughs> no <laughs> Send stitches. Send me a photo. Yeah, nothing. No <laughs> stitches. Nothing. A little Botox <laughs> yeah. bruise. No, literally. Right? No, you just so Botox. it's <laughs> like there's this, this need <sighs> that they can't stand it if someone else is getting your attention. Now, they did not value you in the relationship at all. At all. At all. Mm -hmm. So you like left. Right. Because that makes sense. (laughs) I'm not love. Yeah. He doesn't love me. Yeah. Isn't faithful to me. I'm leaving. I'm going to (laughs) leave. Like one plus one is two. Yeah. And they're aghast. Yeah. And they want to ruin, actually ruin your life. Yeah. I mean, it truly, that's not an exaggeration. I know. They will do everything to ruin your life. Mm Mm-hmm. And how could or should the new partner deal with the narcissist? Because unfortunately, when kids are little, you might be at sporting events together. You might you will see each other. And so obviously, depending on how the narcissist is with them, how do you recommend the new partner behave? The more jealous and emotionally violent or other kind of violent they may be, if they are going to be around you as the outside person, that's not genetically connected to the kids, you don't go. Okay. Oh, if it's that bad. If it's that bad. Yeah. Yeah. And this is what we're talking about. We're not talking about the friendly type. Right. Yeah. (laughs) So (laughs) I, I, in my partner's life have, have not met their mother and it's been eight years. Oh, wow. Because she's already so spun up about me. Yeah. Um, and what I do for work and I'm often probably defining her. So (laughs) I think that I love his boys so much. And I've explained to them, it's not good for you Mm -hmm. if I come. Now I go when she's not there. Okay. Also, that's their mother. Yeah. And I will always respect that that is their mother. 
I want to be a mentor, a friend, a sports fanatic with them. I'm yeah. unwell at their basketball games. It's I'm unwell. I love it. Yeah, I try to be the, <laughs> yeah. but I'm more like the LSU basketball yeah, no. coach who's I, insane. Like I, I, I get that's it. me. So I get. I totally understand why I'm some parents well. are like that now. I'm like I, <laughs> yeah. I get it. Yeah. So I get so excited. Yeah. So I <laughs> I do feel like my heart. It, it, you know, and step families is probably a whole other show, but yeah, my heart with these boys is to be respectful of what's going to keep them at peace more than anything else. Now they have reached to me in critical times mm-hmm. and I have deflected those over to my partner. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. it's just not my kids and I wish they were, mm. but they're not. Yeah. And I do respect her and I do respect that that is their mother. As a human being, do I respect her? I don't at all. Mm -hmm. But I can't change that for his boys. I can just love them. I can hear them. I do not advise them. Okay. Um, I let that be up to my partner to advise his kids. Or I'll ask his permission, would you be okay if I advise them? Okay. And he's that same way with my daughter. So my ex has been, my daughter chose at 14 no more. Wow. And in California, you can do that. So that's another thing. With your kids, the brain does well if it knows there's an end date. So they will often say, how long do I have to do this? So I would say to her, well, honey, we we have to legally do it until 14. Okay. All right. So then in her head, she's she's like, like, okay, "Okay, I could do that, mom. I'm 10, so I could do that. Let's chat about Truly. I know you guys know the brand. You've seen it. You've tried them. You love them just like I do. And if there's one thing my friends and I love on the weekend... It's an ice cold hard seltzer sometimes, but let's get real. The usual packs and flavors are just so dull. There's not a lot of variety. That's why I'm so excited that Truly is shaking things up with their new party pack. Truly believes that life can be more refreshing when we can be real, let loose, embrace imperfection, and allow ourselves to be free from convention. That's why Truly has something for everyone in more than 30 unique flavors, including three lightly flavored mix packs, berry, and new party pack. Truly Hard Seltzer's new party pack has a flavor for everyone, making it perfect for you and all of your friends. With four fan favorite flavors, including brand new raspberry, it's got a little something for everyone. Bring it to wine night, bring it to book club. Now that the weather is starting to warm up, you can bring it to all of the barbecues that you're going to be going to, pool parties. With this new pack, there's nowhere you can't bring the party. Each flavor is super light, crazy refreshing, and made with real fruit juice. With only 5% ABV, 100 calories, and one gram of sugar in each can, Truly is the perfect drink to keep you on track with your summer body goals. To find Truly Heart Seltzer near you, go to trulyheartseltzer.com slash locations. That's trulyheartseltzer.com slash locations. Truly Heart Seltzer. Keep it light. Truly Heart Seltzer Beverage Company, Boston, Massachusetts. Please drink responsibly. All right, let's talk about a new TV show for a second. Are you tired of endlessly scrolling through streaming platforms, searching for your next binge-worthy obsession? Well, guys, look no further. I've got you covered. Let me introduce you to the star's original series you never knew you needed, Mary and George. It's a story of power, passion, and scandal that will absolutely keep you on the edge of your seat. Mary and George stars Julianne Moore and Nicholas Galitzin, inspired by the unbelievable true story of Mary Villiers, who molded her beautiful and charismatic son, George, to seduce King James I and become his all-powerful lover. Through outrageous scheming, the pair rose from humbled beginnings to become the richest, most titled, and influential players the English court had ever seen. I love a little period drama, and that's why I am so excited about this show. And plus, I think I've seen nearly everything Julianne Moore has ever been in. She's just incredible, and Nicholas is just jaw-dropping in this. Critics are calling the two of them electric in Mary and George, and I totally agree. Reviews also say the show is sexy, witty, and darkly rewarding. Three things I know I absolutely love in a TV series. Seriously, you guys, I could not tear my eyes away. And I haven't felt that way about a show in a really long time. So grab some popcorn, snuggle up on the couch, and immerse yourself in the drama, the intrigue, and the scandal of the English court. Trust me, guys, watch Mary and George only on Stars and the Stars app. Dog owners, you're going to want to listen up. 
whether you have a few weeks old puppy or a senior who's seen multiple decades, any dog person like me knows the most valuable thing in the world is spending time with your pet. The farmer's dog can help keep them healthy, which can give you more quality years with them. The farmer's dog makes and delivers fresh, healthy dog food. It's recommended by vets, nutritionally balanced, and made from human-grade ingredients in safe, clean kitchens. It's the best option for dogs at all life stages because it's not kibble, it's not canned goo, it's just real food. The farmer's dog isn't just higher quality food. They also send the food pre-portioned specifically for your dog based on their unique nutritional needs. This makes it easy to help your dog maintain their ideal weight which is one of the biggest indicators of a full, healthy life. A healthy diet isn't just important for humans. We, of course, want to take care of our dogs the same way we would our kids or anybody else that we love. And you guys, my dogs go absolutely insane for this food. You should see Kona, my German shepherd. As I'm preparing it, she just has drool all the way down her mouth. It is so funny. So it doesn't matter if your dog is young or old. It's always the right time to begin investing in their health, helping you live more healthy, happy, and full years together. Get 50% off your first box of fresh, healthy food at thefarmersdog.com slash honest. Plus, you get free shipping. Just go to thefarmersdog.com slash honest. Go to thefarmersdog.com slash honest and get 50% off your first box plus free shipping. I asked you this last time, but I'm going to ask it again because I was kind of blown away. And I think it's the answer is really important, important for people to hear. Do narcissists know what they're doing? Absolutely. They know. So they know they are they know. hurting people. They know. So let, let, let's go back to this, okay? Let's talk about the three faces of projection. I okay. just did a video on this. The first face is they project all of their abusive negative qualities onto you. Yes. You have the big ego. Yes. You're the abuser. You're the parent alienator. Yep. And then they second face is they project our good qualities and our good parenting onto them. Oh, my God. I am like, yes. Okay. (laughs) Where people get stuck, though, is in the third phase of projection, which is reverse projection, where we project our good qualities onto our narcissist. Explain that to me. We want to believe that they are who we thought they are. Oh, okay, okay. So we give them, that's why we stayed for as many years as we did in the marriage. Right, Okay, so our children are going to reverse project. Oh. They want oh. and they they have to believe that their mommy and daddy are good people. You're right. Whoa. So they will make up a story that they are the bad child oh. because the parent is always good. Yeah. And they project their good fantasy qualities and they keep waiting for the parent to be good. Wow. So these narcissistic parents know this. Uh, it makes me sick, honestly. Mm-hmm. They do not feel for anyone but themselves, Mm -hmm. but they feel very deeply for themselves. Oh, yes, they do. So they don't care how they treated you during the marriage, but they care very deeply if you leave them. Right. And then that's the only thing they focus on. That's correct. So if they're wise enough to be able to litigate you out of every conversation, Mm -hmm. gaslight, project, deflect, all of those things, then they are certainly bright enough to know what they're doing to people and that those things hurt their victim. Yeah. They do not care if they hurt their kids, if that hurting the kids makes the kids more loyal. Right. Oh, my God. I mean, it really, it just, it kills me. They know. Yeah, they do. How could they not know? And then, so they have no remorse as well. Zero. Zero. And this is, this is what allows them to be more and more of what they are and not care. Yeah. Yeah is that if they don't feel anything for what they've done and they actually feel rewarded at the hurting of another person, including their children, Mm -hmm. then why would they change that? Yeah. Yeah. God. Like we would love to believe that they have like, like a, like a, like a handicap. Right. Right. Like Which something, is what I used to think. Yeah, like, I mean, oh, they're just handicapped. Like, you know, they're in a wheelchair. Yeah, they're they handicapped. don't know what they're they doing. <laughs> they're, you know, they, they need help. Yeah, yeah. They, they they know exactly what they're doing. And they, the, for us that feel that they don't know, we're being fooled. Right, right. Because then in a way, it's like, oh, you have empathy towards them. Where after talking to you the first time, then mm-hmm. I was like, Oh, no, now I have so much anger towards these narcissists. Which, as you should. As you should. As, as you everybody should. should. Anger is the most honest. Yeah. I'm not talking rage. No, yeah, no. But just 
the most honest. It's the emotion that loves you the most. Yeah. And I unpack anger huge in my new book because I was punished for being angry. Right. Oh, right. Okay. So yeah. our kids, if they get angry at the narcissist, yeah. they will hot call you if they're on their time, what an out of control kid you have, and they blame the kid. Yeah, right. But we don't know what came first. Right. So then what do we do? Respect your parent. Right. Well, let's ask first, why are you so angry? Mm-hmm. What happened? You know, so they absolutely know what they're doing. They live to do this every day. Yeah. And I have found the only time you'll ever get an apology, and it's a bullshit apology, oh, yeah. but it's when they want something else from you. 100%. But that, but that's it. You'll never get an apology in any other situation. No, no, no. <laughs> well, we should also talk about conditional kindness. Okay. And the dosing of that. Oh, okay. Okay. Explain that. Intermittent doses of kindness have to be there for abuse to work. Who oh, would yeah. stay... If it was only abuse. No one. Right. That'd be negative reinforcement. Right. Okay. And that's the confusing part because yeah. you're like, they can be so great. They can be so nice. So now <laughs> here goes a little child. They've been love bombed. Yeah. And they do this. See? They're getting better. Yeah. They've changed. Because you have to think about a little kid. They don't have past, present, future consciousness. Yeah. That doesn't develop until like 10 where they recognize there is a yesterday and a tomorrow. Okay. And, you know, that's why when you're young and you're waiting for Christmas, it feels like yeah. it's never going to yeah. get here. Yeah. So yeah. you start opening stuff up. <laughs> I did like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in the secret. So when that parent love bombs them after and they tend to love bomb in the cycle of violence. Right. So right after they've brutalized this okay, kid. Yeah. And oh. part of the love bombing is don't go tell your other parent what I just did oh. because look what I just did to fix it. Right. Oh, which is just, it's all so confusing for a kid. Now, do I think narcissists have good control of their emotions? No. They love to externalize the drama. Yeah. Okay, so then they have to do something after that to make that drama reasonable okay, and yeah. justifiable. Right. So then they just start talking. Have you ever noticed that narcissists, they, 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 it's like they don't edit. Yes. So you know why? They keep talking until it sounds good to them. Whoa. Yeah. So at first it's not sounding good. Yeah. Okay, but your brain's already tapping out because yeah. the verbal arsenal coming your way. Well, this is one of their strategies. If they talk your ear off, you'll tap out and they'll get what they want. Holy shit. It's cra- I mean, I am just always blown away that, yeah, no, that's exactly how it always goes. <laughs> you get a lecture. Yeah, yeah. And then they're projecting all of their bad qualities onto you. And then we are insane enough to try and go back at that because no. that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> that you just get eaten alive, Ugh, right? Like banging so your head against a wall. I feel that when they put all of that in there, you know, it like turns into a document type of thing. And yeah. it texts you, you write so much, turns yeah. into a document. Yes. Oh my <laughs> okay. God. Exactly. <laughs> and you're like, oh God. And you're overwhelmed and your yeah. blood pressure is already raising. Yeah. I would see my ex's name on my phone and my blood pressure would raise because I'd be like, oh God. I had to change someone's name in my phone without naming names to a mm-hmm. like buckle up, fasten your seatbelt. No, I put Satan in, in mine. It was like, oh, you're so sweet. I put Satan. Yeah, I know. I was like, but it was like, oh, like fucking brace yourself. Like what's it is. coming your way? <laughs> because they're scary. Yeah. It's always something. What it's happens like- is, you know, honestly, what, what their big trick is, is they want to overwhelm you. Yes. Yes. Because no one really has a great skill set for overwhelm because you're overwhelmed in the moment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, we're not like, let my reasoning yeah. come in and just let me unoverwhelm. <laughs> it, it, you're there. You're yeah. like hot already. So the more that you cannot respond to those types of texts, yeah. because those are the ones that they turn into an emergency. Okay, right. The well, dramatic languaging. I'm trembling. Yes. So, you know? and, and I think like not responding immediately. I think that's probably a good tip. No Breathe. reaction. Right. You don't mm-hmm. have to respond immediately when they or text you. Or at all. Or at all. Or at all. You do not have to respond yeah. to everything that they send you. You do not. Now, when you don't, they're going to threaten to take you to court. Yeah, which... Okay, really? Yeah, okay. I used to believe it. And then till I was yeah. like, oh, that again. It, it, it's so frequent. 
Yeah. It's their way to try and scare you per our stipulation. This is how they all communicate. Yeah, they love to throw in. Seriously? Yeah. Okay. And I think at first it is really scary because any Mm -hmm. legal anything is scary scary and it's stressful. And so, and at first it's easy to get wrapped up in that and then play their little game. But then you realize, no, this is all bullshit. All they're doing is trying to scare me. Yes. I also think, too, you have to get to a place of letting go because otherwise you will drive yourself fucking crazy yeah. worrying about your kids at your ex's house. That's, right. All, That's like right. You have to just empower them, do the best that you can do, be the best mom or dad that you can be, control what you can control, yeah. and then you have to let it go. I tell my patients this, stay in your lane Yeah. and look up the let them theory. Okay. What is that? If they're going to be an asshole, let, let them. them. Okay. Let them. Because you can't do anything what are, what are about it. Gonna, what's going to happen? I mean, we can't control their reactions, yeah. right? And they react the most heavily to truth and reality. Yes. They like all the drama, the texting they and all the things. They, they, they love the toxic. Mm-hmm. Okay. So they always create toxic soup. But I feel like when you, if you're a car and you're driving and they're a car and they're driving and your kids are in their car, you can't unman your car get in their car yeah. and fight for the wheel. This one's still moving okay. and this one's driving. They're both going to crash. Yeah. Okay. Your kids, unfortunately, are going to be under their care. Mm-hmm. You have to accept that. Yeah. Yeah. The law says so. Yeah. So you don't have to like it, <clears throat> and but you have to accept it. Mm-hmm. Whatever you're doing in your time, self-care, mm-hmm. do your best to... Follow whatever rules that you have, Mm -hmm. right? But you cannot control them whatsoever. And your kids will start speaking. The more you create space for your kids to feel without badgering them about their feelings, Mm -hmm. because that can be another thing we make a mistake on. They come home, we've been worried, sick, what happened? Right. Are you okay? Did anything bad happen? Right. It's putting that on them. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Now, if over a few days they're off and nothing's been said, you can be like, hey, buddy, Mm -hmm. what's up? Yeah. You've been off. Now you can associate it with that weekend. Okay. You've been off for a few days. I just want to be sure there isn't anything that you need to talk about. They also need to know that their secrets are safe with you. Yeah. Yeah. So here's another hard thing. You have to keep secrets that you are like, this is horrific. Yeah. What do I do? I'm not helping my kid. You know, so as they get older and they recognize that their secrets are safe with you, you have to be someone they can trust. Have to be. Yeah. Because if what you say, you say it to that parent and they get punished when they go back, yep. now they trust no one. Yeah, right. And they need you. Bad. Yeah. Document. Yeah, exactly. When you have that compulsion to yeah. talk and to confront, document. Document. Document everything. Every everything. little thing. It does work work. It does. It, it does, does work. And I do think for kids, it's important to be the stable one, be consistent The for them to trust you, love them, like yes. just be what you can be. All you have to do is just really love your kids. Yeah. You know, if you're consistent and you're stable, see if also if they're able to make you totally unstable when yeah. you have your custodial yeah. time, they never they're get winning. And but they never get away from that parent. Well, right, right exactly. It if, yes. scares the shit out of your kids yes. when they watch that scary parent harm their parent. Yes. And if you're not handling it well, yep. then they lose trust in you. Yeah. Yeah. And God. then they feel hopeless. No one can handle this parent. And I have to go by myself. I know. And that's a lot for a kid. It's yeah. a lot. Okay, so yeah. you do have to have an ability to regulate your worry, your fear, and your emotions around your kids. And you just have to focus on what's in your car, what's in your lane, what's in your home. How can you just make this a good place to be without pressured around emotions? Because you know what happens when they go over to the other house is they get interviewed. Yo, yo, yeah. It's an interview. Yeah. What'd you do with your mom this week? Oh, yeah. Who was there? Mm-hmm. Oh, she's already putting you around someone else. Yeah, oh, yeah. This is what's going on. Yes. And, and, <clears throat> And they have all these judgments. Now mm-hmm. your kids are confused. Mm-hmm. They're constantly trying to make you seem like the unsafe parent. Mm-hmm. They will lie. You're not paying your child support. Document. Document everything. I can't tell you yeah. how many parents I've worked with that I'm like, show them all of your ledgers. Okay, right. Yeah. I also think it's important, too, to remember you're playing the long game. I really believe in my soul yeah. the kids will figure it out eventually. They Long always term, do. the child always knows 
who the bad parent is. Yeah. You cannot be offended or betrayed by children who are only colluding with a mean person to save their lives. Don't forget how many years you colluded with that same person as an adult. Right, right. <laughs> oh my God, I know. It's, if yeah, if, if they have to people please over there yeah, yeah. and collude with lies being told about you yeah. to be safe, okay. Yeah, exactly. Let them. Exactly. If it's going to save their emotional life in that world, yeah. let them. Yeah, because they will figure it out. They're not betraying you. They're yeah. saving themselves. Yeah. There's a big difference between that. That is such a good point. That really is. This is all such good information. I mean, this is why I just love you so much. Sherry. Well, you can have me back whenever you want, <laughs> I mean, Kristen. I literally, I'm going <laughs> I to. But also, before I let you go, I want to hear about your new book because you've written five books, yes. right? And you just had a new five one. books in six years. Uh, damn! I told That's my publisher lot. literally today, Kristen. They're like, "We want a workbook. We want you to do a course." I'm like, "Oh my okay, god!" Like, I'm tired. It's a lot of work. I'm tired. And also, this is like traumatic stuff. It's very yeah, dramatic. Yeah. I am working on a workbook. I will be wow. doing a course, but they're allowing me to do it at my pace. Okay, good. Uh, my publisher really values me and I do love New Harbinger. But mm. yes, my new book is Adult Survivors of Emotionally Abusive Parents. And I got a comment today that I read it to Scott on the way down, but she's like, I love that your book doesn't make parents evil. Mm. It's a sensitive topic. I don't like harsh judgment. This book is a phenomenal book for the do's and don'ts of parenting. Okay, yeah. But the effects of of what it is like as a child to not feel loved. Yeah, yeah. And to feel so unwanted, yeah. you know, in, in their lives. And abuse is not an accident. Mm -hmm. You know, my TED Talk is out. And that was the dream of a lifetime. That was the most horrific, exhilarating thing <laughs> I've ever done in my life. It's incredible. But I got a comment today that said, well, parents don't know what they're doing. If they were raised, they're just doing the best they can. And I thought, well, I should respond. <laughs> what know? do you say to that? I said, there's no excuse for abuse. Yeah, yeah. Abusing someone is not an accident. It is a choice. They know what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. We really, because we're really sweethearted people, want to believe that no one in their right mind could do that. Well, they're not in their right mind. Well, right, exactly. <laughs> That's not a right mind. Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> I think that between the TED Talk, they dropped within five days of each other which was not planned. The TED Talk also, mm -hmm. it's just defining what a toxic parent is. Mm -hmm. We tend to just be attracted to what was familiar. Yeah, what we know. Right, we have to grow. Divorcing and setting boundaries on a narcissistic ex is a step of growth. Yeah. Look at the opportunities that you have with your kids to teach them to find themselves, okay, find yeah. their guts. I love that. Because they're hurting in their guts. Yeah. And if we... If we just play devil's advocate, like, well, you know your dad. You just have to let stuff like that go. Why? Right. Why? Right. We, we didn't let it go. No. We divorced him. But we want our kids to just let it go because what we want life to be easier for us, it's never going to be. We need to give them a language that they can feel and say their truth. Yeah. I love that. And so to much. teach them, like, I don't care if someone agrees or disagrees. If that is your truth, you stick to it. Right. I think what I love about my book is if you haven't had kids yet, this is a book you should read. Absolutely. I do differentiate <clears throat> healthy parenting from toxic parenting all throughout the book. This is what a toxic parent family does. This is what a healthy parent family that does. That is when you should be reading this stuff is before you have kids so that then Absolutely. you can go into it with all of the right tools. Yeah. <laughs> what I think all kids need to know when we're talking about divorcing, right, and, and them having to maintain the self-worth of the parent, children do not cause bad parents. Mm. How is that possible? Yeah. Yeah. No, they do not. No. Nope. They do not. Children are just the easiest to sweep under the carpet yeah. and blame. Yeah. Oh. Also, if you confront <clears throat> your ex on something your, your kid says, he'll say your kid's a liar. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> Which is, it just blows my mind. How can you, as a parent, I can't He's imagine. exaggerating. They're yeah. exaggerating. They're yeah. lying. That never happened. I know. And any parent in the right mind is like, how could anyone ever do that? But they I mean, scapegoat their child yeah. as a liar. Yeah. I, it's how so fucked powerless up. Powerless <laughs> does that make your child? I know. Because then that child's going to be afraid that you're going to think they're a liar. Or what if you believe yeah. your ex? I know. Why would a kid make it up? <clears throat> I know. For what? It's it's beyond. What kind of attention are they really going to get from that? I know. I know. None. Nothing positive. No. No. Mm -mm. 
Well, Dr. Sherry, I mean, I just, I love you. And I you love helped you back. so many people. Thank I mean, you, and you know that, but like yeah. the response that the last podcast had, it, 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 it had just, me in tears. I know. I felt <laughs> it too. Like, wow. And I was, like, it's just amazing what you're doing. And thank so I you. know everyone appreciates it and I appreciate yeah. you. And so thank you so much for being well, here. I again. appreciate you, Kristen. <laughs> I, I, I feel so connected to you as too. well, but it's really special coming down. I love being on your show. I just, the more that we can touch people and create a revolution yeah. of it's time to tell parents when they need to do better. Exactly. Exactly. Step parents included. Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, I mean, maybe we do another we'll one. We'll do another on one on step have that that's is, a whole thing. It's a whole other thing. <laughs> that's a whole bag of wax. You'll be back. You'll I'll be back. back. Yeah. I cannot <laughs> wait. Thank you. Thank you. Thank too. you. Thank you. You bet, honey. I just love I you. I just love I you. Love you. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.